Welcome to IDF TV. My name is Frank Imfius and I'm from the Oracle J Developer and IDF Product Management Team. In this session we talk about error handling in Oracle IDF and it's the first session out of four where we cover this topic as part of the architecture training. If we look at the overview of the four layers that we have in Oracle IDF then we see that exception basically can occur everywhere. Starting from the business service, where for instance the exception comes from ADF business components or from an EGB or from a web service, to the binding layer and then the task flow layer, where during the processing of navigation or by executing logic from the task flow, an exception might be thrown. And then we do have the view layer, where there's no single point of exception handling there, but at least a strategy to share, which basically is like to conservatively use try-catch blocks and to anticipate no pointer exceptions or other exceptions and not just blindly uh, thinking that everything will go right as you coded it. And then the last resort, well that's the web browser. Now every exception that is not handled in one of the ADF uh, layers will go to the browser and that is the big bang that your users will not enjoy seeing because it will take them out of their working context. So the whole idea of proper exception handling and error handling is that you catch the exception as close to the source as possible so that the user of the application can stay in the working context. So let's have a look what the options are and what we're covering within the four recordings about error handling. So first of all, all of the layers that I introduced in the overview will have facilities to handle exceptions. Of course, on the business service, I can handle exceptions, I can anticipate problems, I can surround things with a try-catch block. However, sometimes you don't want to catch the exception because the exception might be an application error, like a validation error. So you don't want to swallow that. You want to bring this up to the middle tier so that the middle tier can display a dialogue to the client informing the user about what happened. So not all exceptions are really bad. Some are quite useful and we call them application exceptions or application errors. Then we do have on the binding layer a central point that I will cover in a separate recording where you can create a custom error handling that then is used to dispatch all of the exceptions that happen in the binding layer and in the business service if it's accessed through the binding layer. For task flows, we have two options that we need to talk about. One is to extend the overall framework exception handler and the other one is to define error handling activities in your bounded task flow. And then in ADF phases, well, we do have the option to use try-catch blocks in the managed bean. And the last resort, that might be a checking or a setting in the web XML file on the server level to avoid uh, stack traces to be displayed in the browser window. So let's have a look at when in the process of a request errors could happen. Well, in the JSF lifecycle we have six steps that we are aware of and it's basically after the first step after restore view where the binding context is set up and after that ADF is available. So this means that now you can use ADF and the framework will do that. So the first time where we use the framework actively is during process validation because during process validation if you look at some of the uh, page sources that we generate as a response to you dragging from the data control palette you will see that the F validator tag is added to the component and it's pointing to the binding layer. So it's checking for required fields, it's checking for length validation and this is where it touches the binding layer and of course that's the first time where things can go wrong. The second time where things can go wrong is during the update model phase because here is where the changes in the model in the binding layer are passed to the business service. Not yet committed but passed to the business service as an update to the view object and entity object. Again validation will trigger here on the entity level and if that fails an exception will be thrown and will bubble up to the binding layer. The next stop is the invoke action. And if you look at some of your button code, the action listener that you have there, you will see it's accessing the binding layer to execute a query, to commit, to rollback, or whatever method you, for instance, expose on the business service. Now, this is all during invoke action. And the last is during render response. If you look in your iterator bindings, you will see 
that the iterator is set to refresh deferred, which means that shortly before the render response, it will fetch the data to send with the response. Again, touching the binding layer, touching the business service, and there is where exception could occur. The Oracle ADF framework is derived from ADF business components. And for that reason, there's one exception class that both technologies share, which is called the JBO exception. The JBO exception is the base class of all exceptions in ADF and in ADF business components. And one of its features is that it doesn't require you to declare an exception being thrown on a method. As a Java programmer, you probably know that you have to declare a method to throw an exception before it throws one. Now, you don't have to do this with JBO exception because JBO exception already extends the runtime exception, the Java runtime exception, so there's no need for that. In addition to this, JBO exception can be translated. So we support multiple languages and you, in displaying the exception, you call the get translated message. And when we talk about error handling on the binding layer, there's one method that actually will allow you to change the style of the message that is displayed to the user and you can use that to perform translation or just to pick up the translation that comes with the exception. When we look into exceptions, then what we see for ADF business components as the model, but you know, in general, whenever you use JBO exceptions, that is that you don't see just one exception. Imagine the case where you have an update of 20 rows and in each of the rows you have a validation error then instead of just going one by one, IDF provides you a bundled exception. So what we do is we group comparable or similar exceptions and then wrap them in what we call an exception container. And the same actually is what you could do with your exceptions as well. The only difference is that in IDF that happens automatically. Java itself is not made for that. Java by itself would just throw one by one. So this is why having the JBO exception is of a great benefit. And even if you work with an E2B business model, consider using JBO exceptions. Just wrap your own exceptions into JBO exceptions because that will give you the chance for bundled exceptions. And all of the exceptions, as I mentioned, that we have in ADFBC, if it's the uh, TXN value exception or if it's the validation exception, they're all kind of wrapped exceptions and they could be sent bundled to the client. And then on the client you can use the error handler that we will talk about in the next recording to look into the details if needed. Otherwise you just show the top level exception or just skip the exception and you will see what I mean by skipping an exception when we talk about the error handler in one of the next recordings. That concludes the introduction to the error handling and just pointing out that whatever you don't handle in the business service will bubble up to the binding layer, which is why the next recording where we talk about error handling on the binding layer becomes important. Because if you do things right, then all exceptions that you cannot handle in the business service or that might uh, occur without you having a chance to control or handle it will end up in the binding layer. But there's one prerequisite to that and this is that actually the request has to come through the binding layer. And I will reiterate that over and over again. Never bypass the binding layer because whatever goes through the binding layer also will make the binding layer aware of actions that happen. But also if there is an exception, this exception goes to the binding layer and this is where in the next recording you will learn how you can put yourself into control.